This is not leadership, by the way, guys. This is cowardice. This is negligence on a scale that is unforgivable. We can't forgive this man. We can't forgive this narcissist, this dictator. Right now, I can't talk to my family. I can't talk to my girlfriend. I can't have sex. Because Ruta is stressing me, man. We came peacefully to demonstrate against a bill that threatened our freedom, that sought to undermine the very fabric of our society, man. And what did we get in return? Brutality, violence, and now after all the pain and loss, a hollow rejection of the bill, man. It feels like an afterthought, right? A desperate attempt to save face after the damage has already done. There's no going back, guys. The president must know why Kuku went a hajandogo na kubwa maramoja and a koroga kiachilia. The president's actions are a stark reminder of the disconnect by they that he has. Kama Rigiji, the way the Rigiji just say, between the government and the people. Instead of protecting us, they are attacking us. Instead of listening to us, they are silencing us. Jacob Juma saw this. You know? And now when it's too late for those who have suffered the most, they, they try to backtrack and uh, say, you know, we are sorry. What is sorry for somebody who has lost a life? Like, guys, me, literally, I'm still shaking, no? But this is not the end. We'll continue to fight tomorrow for justice and for the memory of those who paid the ultimate price. We can't name all of them. Their names are all over trending. Our voices will grow louder. Our resolve will grow stronger. And our unity must be unbreakable, guys. We will not forget. And we will not forgive this blatant disregard of our lives and rights. Enough is enough. Tomorrow morning, let's occupy the streets. Let's chant. Let's make us be heard everywhere. Appreciation goes to those guys who are making us be seen out there, the Larry Maddows. And you guys who are holding these places wherever you are. Viva! Thank you, thank you, Asante Sana. Let's have um, Nelson. Nelson, are you ready to speak? And then yeah. you were leaving the airport. Okay, so let's have Nelson, and then let's have uh, Vincent next, and then after Vincent, let's have um, Madame Madge herself from Germany, and then we can move forward. After Madge, we can have history, uh, history KE. So after the next, just just immediately start speaking. Thank you. Thank you, Jelani. Thank you, Kiamozi, for this space. This is a wonderful time to be Kenyan. I feel so patriotic, and so many other people feel very patriotic. Everybody I'm speaking to is feeling this. It's like we are gaining independence again. So this is such a great moment to be Kenyan. Um, and it's so sad that we are not in Kenya. I would have loved to be in Kenya because I would definitely be in the protests. And everybody who knows me knows that I would have been at the center of the protests. Um, in, uh, respective of that, I have organized a protest with the uh, Kenya Students Association in France leadership. And we are organizing a protest in Paris on Friday. And it's going to be for the entire, the whole of the everybody in um, in Paris who is a Kenyan. So it's not only for students, it's only that, you know, we have only capacity to speak as the students, uh, student body in, in Paris. Um, so uh, before I continue, I want to also pass my condolences to the people who lost their lives um, yesterday. It is so sad that people had to shed the, the blood for a stupid bill for just a mere bill, something that it's it's uh, it's an it's unthinkable. When you think about it, you get so angry that people were shot in the head with a sniper, like terrorists. Those snipers, where were they when Westgate was being attacked? Where were they when Ducit was being attacked? They are so good at attacking unarmed people, but when there is a situation where we need them, they're nowhere to be found. They are cowards. Cowards are the only people who attack weak people. And that's what they did. They are cowards. Because how can you attack someone with no gun, no weapon, nothing? And you shoot them in the head and their brains are all over it. 
um, this is it's tragic. It's a tragic moment, and it's even more tragic that the president could not even show any form of empathy. I mean, what kind of leadership is that? Um, anyway, I really want to pass my condolences to the families of the people who lost their lives, the mothers. I know it's a difficult time to lose um, your your family member, but just know that blood is not did not go to waste. Change is coming. And um, so before I begin to speak, I want to read something. So I'm, I'm beginning to read this statement. What country before ever existed a century and a half without a rebellion? And what country can preserve its liberties if their rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? What signify a few lives lost in a century or two? The tree, the, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It, it, it is its natural manure. Our convention has been too much impressed. Okay, so it continues. But my point here is that from time to time, the tree of liberty must be refreshed by the blood of patriots and tyrants. That's its manure. So what is happening is it's historic. It's something that was bound to happen because of all the injustices that have been happening even before the, um, we gained independence. Mm. And um, there is a book I was reading. It was explaining why institutions in Africa are very weak and why institutions in the West are strong. And the institutions in Africa and other third world countries are that deliberately like this, they're weak so that the West can be able to um, exploit their resources. And the leaders, the politicians are the enablers of these weak mm -hmm. institutions. So all the politicians you see from Jomo Kenyatta to Moi to mm -hmm. all the politicians that have led us have only acted on behalf of the West. And you can see that they never really wanted the institutions to be strong and they never wanted the institutions to be independent. The institutions, like today, there is no mm -hmm. parliament. We do not have a parliament. And without a strong parliament, there is no one to call out the president. No, absolutely no one. You could see it today in, on TV and how the MPs were, were giggling and laughing when uh, President Ruto was speaking. It's like his children, you know, when it's like when people are surrounding a rich, a rich guy and the rest are poor. You will see how they will even laugh at things that are not even jokes, you know, because the, the guy is rich and he, he will be paying the bills. This is exactly how the MPs were behaving. Can you imagine people who are supposed to check your power are uh, they are wagging their tail when you're around? How will they represent us, the people? Our parliament, there we don't have a parliament. We need to recall all those MPs. We need to recall them because there is no way the country will move forward with that kind of, uh, of, of leadership. And I want to bring my point back to the institutions, the weak institutions. So the West, through the IMF and other bodies, they have made sure that our institutions in Africa are systematically weakened. With every successful gov successive government, they will make sure that our institutions are not strong enough because when our institutions are strong enough, we will begin to industrialize. We will begin to see things in different in a different light. We will have strong property laws, property rights. We will have um, we will have good institutions. Mean that when 
an entrepreneur, for example, I want to go back to Kenya and set up a business and I have money to set up the business. If there is strong property, right, property rights and there is good institutions, strong in institutions, the justice system is fair. I will be, I will have confidence to put my money. But today, if you go to Kenya and you want to set up a business, first of all, you will be met by a lot of bureaucracies. Nothing is working. The institutions are too weak for you to be able to set up anything. And on top of that, there is an unpredictable tax regime. A tax regime that is unpredictable means that any FDI, foreign direct investment, the investors cannot be able to invest in your country because they don't know in the <laughs> next five years what will happen. Because Ruto keeps changing the tax. Every year there's a new tax. Every year there's something new. Every So the country, there's no stable environment for business. And this is affecting major... I, I need you to land. I need you to land, Nelson. Land. Okay, okay, Jelani.